Hi, and welcome to the Cybersecurity Training Series, where we cover a wide range of topics, including application security, network security, encryption, and of course, identity and access management. In this short clip, we will tell you what the three A's are. If you are embarking on your cybersecurity career, or simply want to expand your knowledge of this field, identity and access management and the three A's are fundamental concepts. Everything we do as part of identity and access management activities ensures the three A's are implemented fully and done in a secure and reliable manner. Understanding them will help you gain a high level knowledge of the basics before you delve into more details. Let's dig in. What is IAM anyway? It stands for Identity and Access Management. IAM is a set of policies and technologies to ensure that appropriate access to technology and data resources are provided to people and computer systems. IAM is not a new concept. As humans, we identify each other all the time. We do this by receiving sensory input and then use our brain to process that input. We then identify familiar objects and people. Nowadays, when IAM is mentioned, we typically mean scenarios where machines are the recipients of the input, and it's the machines who have to make the identity and access decisions. For example, when you log into your Facebook account, you effectively request Facebook servers to validate your access and determine what posts and content you have access to. With that introduction, now let's talk about the three A's. The three A's are authentication, authorization, and accounting. Authentication is the process of verifying that a person or system is who they say they are. Again, we as humans do this on a daily basis. When someone knocks on the door to our house, we ask them who they are or check who they are via the peephole or the front door camera. We then use their voice or face or both to verify their identity. Computers do the same thing. They may use a username or password to do this, but increasingly, even they use the same methods of authentication as us, that is voice, fingerprint, or face recognition. The next concept is authorization. This typically happens after authentication and involves establishing if the person or computer system now identified is allowed access to the IT resource or the data they have requested. To go back to our analogy, you may establish who has knocked on your door, but you then need to decide if they are allowed in. Your family and friends would be authorised to have access inside your house while the postman may not. For IT solutions, this is done via a database that stores what each person's or system's access rights are. The third A stands for accounting, and it consists of monitoring and auditing access to IT assets. This gives us the ability to capture and review the systems that have been accessed, persons or systems who requested access, the time and other information about the access request, and whether it was granted or not. In our house analogy, you may install security cameras to record who is at the front door or inside the house. You have the option to review what is happening in real time via your live footage. You can also look at what has happened in the past via your recorded footage. In IT systems, we do this via taking and sometimes centralizing logs captured from different IT systems. These logs can be analyzed to detect malicious activities against IT assets. This is how Gmail or Facebook log access to your account and notify you of suspicious activity when your account is accessed via a new browser or a new unfamiliar location. You now know the basic blocks of identity and access management and are ready to learn more advanced concepts. Good luck.